Finally, I want to go over a few advanced features that REDCap offers. These features will help you with data management and data quality, especially in the middle and back end of your study. A couple of them I'm only going to touch on to make sure that you know they're available, and a couple I'll go into in a little more detail. The first one I'm going to go over is the randomization module. To use the randomization module, go to Enable Optional Modules and Customizations and click Enable next to the randomization module. Now you'll see a new box, Set up a randomization module. Click Go to Set up randomization to see the randomization page. If you want more information on this page, you can click on More Details for a little bit more detail on how it works and what kind of user privileges you have to have set up to use it. I'm not going to go over how to use it in detail. If you want to use this feature, I highly recommend that you talk with your statistician. Find out if they think the randomization should be done in REDCap and get their advice on the best way to set it up. If you need help using the feature in general, please feel free to contact us at redcap at ucdenver.edu. The second feature I'm going to talk about in a little bit more depth is the logging feature. The logging feature is under Applications on the left-hand menu. Here, REDCap keeps track of all the changes that you make to your project. It tells you when they were made, who made them, what kind of change they were, and if you're adding or changing data, REDCap will tell you what the change was and which record it was in. You can filter these by the type of events, for example, data exports. REDCap doesn't keep quite as detailed a track of how you change project settings and project fields as it does data. You can see when people have created users and created roles, or deleted or updated them. You can see where data has been put in for records, and then you can see record created or updated only. It will also go over record locking, a signature, and page views. You can use this to track what a specific user has done. Or you can use it to track the history of a specific record. The logging feature is a very useful tool if you're trying to backtrack exactly how something was created or maybe where something went wrong. Next, look at the field comment log. You remember when we were doing data entry? If you click on this little speech bubble next to a field, it opens up the field comment log. Here you have the date time, the user entering the data, the record ID, and the field name. Now, whoever is entering data can leave a comment on perhaps if the information was unclear or why something needs to be followed up on. Now, the little speech bubble here is yellow, so someone just scanning down the form will see it. However, that's not exactly time efficient, so you can also go to the field comment log under Applications. Here, you'll see a list of all the comments that were made, and you can sort them by a particular record, a particular field, or a particular user. You can also do a keyword search. This can be a useful way for the data enterer and the data managers to communicate, especially if you're working on different sites or if your schedules simply don't line up very often. Next, let's review the data import tool. This can be found under Applications on the left-hand menu. You notice a warning at the top that my project is still in development. REDCap's reminding me that I should not put real data in until the project has been moved to production, because there are no safeguards here for if I make a change to the project that will affect the data. If you've been cleaning your data outside of REDCap and want to import the clean data, REDCap will provide the templates to do so. You can download the import template with your records in rows or your records in columns. And what you will get will be a blank template that looks like this. Across the top you can see all of my fields, and then I would type or paste in the records as individual rows. One thing I want to note are these fields here. If you look in the online designer, you can see that my variable, other genre, is a series of checkboxes. That means that when I'm importing it, and when it is exported in REDCap, it's not going to be just one column that's other genre. 
Instead, it breaks each of the answer choices into their own column, and then each field will be a yes-no one. So, in this other genre one, it is asking me, action, is it checked, yes or no? If it's checked, I would use a one. If it's not checked, I would use a zero. When you're trying to import data into REDCap, you have to use the variable names, not the field labels. You also have to have the information coded with the 0, 1, or the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that are your answer choices codes. You can't say yes or no, and you can't type out the words that are in your answer choices. REDCap won't recognize them. You have to submit it with the coding, and the variable names have to exactly match what REDCap has for them. That's why it's useful to download the import template and copy your information into it. If you try to import something that doesn't match, REDCap will give you a list of the errors that it has so you can go back and fix them. One other important thing to know is, is that if you're importing data for a record and you leave a field blank, for example, if I didn't put in information for age, if this record already exists in REDCap and I'm just modifying some of the information in it, that blank field will not overwrite the age that REDCap has. So if that person says they are 35 in REDCap and I import it as blank, it will still say 35. You cannot delete information using the data import tool. When you're ready to import your file, go to Choose File, select your file, and click Open, and then choose to upload your file. REDCap will give you a chance to review the data that you're changing. Black text is new data, gray text is existing data that won't change, red text shows things will be over that will be overwritten, a red box is an error, and an orange box is a warning. Once you've reviewed your data and are satisfied with it, you'll click Import Data to actually import the data into the project. If there are any critical errors in the data that you're trying to import, REDCap will let you know what the problem is and which records it's in. That way, you can go back and correct your import and try again. The final tool that we're going to look at for REDCap is the Data Quality Tool. The Data Quality Tool allows you to do some quick checks on your data to help you produce the best quality data for your project. It comes pre-programmed with several tests that you can run right away. You can check for missing values or missing values in required fields only. You can look for field validation errors where you have the incorrect data type or where the information is out of range. You can also search for outliers in numerical fields. You can look for hidden fields that contain values. This would happen because branching logic is hiding them, meaning that the field's value should be blank or null, but someone changed an answer choice after entering in a value in that branching logic. You can also look for multiple choice fields with invalid values. Finally, you can add your own rules. For example, if your study is only for adults, you can search for participants below 18. What you will have to do here is you will give your new rule a descriptive name. Then, you'll enter the logic for the rule. If you're having any difficulty creating the logic, REDCap has the How Do I Use Special Functions link directly below that. You can choose whether or not you want it to execute in real time on data entry forms or not. Then, you just click Add. Thank you very much for watching all of these REDCap introductory tutorial videos. Next, you'll be directed to a short quiz that you can take to finalize your REDCap certification.